Marco Polo. A nod to boys and girls. You know some things about the earth. You know how some people live on the earth. This book will help you to use the things you know. It will help you to find out more things for yourself. Think about the answers to the questions as you read. This is Marco Polo. Marco Polo lived long, long ago. Marco Polo lived in the city of Venice. Venice was a big city by the sea. Men came to Venice from far and near. They came to buy and sell in Venice. They came to trade. They came in big ships and in little ships. Marco saw them come and go. Marco Polo's father was a rich man. He had many ships. He sailed far away in his ships. He sailed all the way to China. He went to buy and sell and trade. Marco wanted to go with his father. He wanted to sail far away. One day, Marco's father sailed away. Uncle Maffello went with him. Marco was six years old when his father sailed away. His father was away for a long, long time. When he came back home, Marco was a young man. Father and Uncle Maffello had many things in the ship. They had gold and silver. They had pepper and other spices from China. They had ivory and silk. They had beautiful wood. Marco was now a young man. He wanted to be like his father. He wanted to see the faraway places. He wanted to see China. He wanted to buy and sell and trade. He said, Father, may I go with you next time? Marco's father said, Yes, you are old enough now. You may go with us. Uncle Maffello went with him. They traveled by sea for many, many days. They traveled on the land for many, many miles. By land and by sea, they traveled east. They were on their way to China. It was hard to be an explorer. There were dangers on the sea. There were dangers on the land too. Robbers stole some of their things. Marco and his father and uncle hid from the robbers. Sometimes they hid for days. Marco was far away from Venice now, but he was with his father and his uncle. He, they traveled in cold lands and hot lands. They traveled over grasslands. They traveled in dry desert lands. They went over high mountains. On the way, they met many people. Some people were called Mongols. The Mongols lived in tents on dry grasslands. On and on the polos went. They couldn't travel fast. There were many dangers. They thought of Venice and home. How far away they were, how far it was from Venice to China. After three years, the polos came to China. They had traveled by land and by sea. Marco had seen hot lands and cold lands. He had seen deserts and mountains. He had met the Mongols and other people. At last, he was in China. The Polos went to see the king of China. The king's name was Kublao Khan. Kublao Khan was glad to see them. He gave a big party for them. Marco saw the king's great house. It was called a palace. It's a beautiful palace, Marco thought. Marco went hunting with Kublao Khan. 
His father and uncle went too. They rode on elephants. How exciting it was. Marco liked Kubla Khan's palace. There he saw many beautiful things. He saw jewels and gold. He saw chairs made up of ivory. He saw tables made up of beautiful wood. Kubla Khan had paper money. Marco Polo had not seen paper money before. He saw men carrying letters on horseback. They rode all over China. The letters went very fast. In Venice, letters took a long time. There were exciting things all around Marco. There were firecrackers. There were black rocks that burned. Marco had never seen burning black rocks. Kublai Khan was a wise man. He wanted to learn new things. He was glad to have many men come to China. He learned from them. Kublai Khan liked Marco Polo. He gave him a job in the palace. Marco learned the language of China. Kublai Khan sent Marco on his sailing ships. Marco saw many new places. He saw many strange and exciting things. Marco saw men dive for pearls. Pearls are in the shells. The shells are found in deep water. The pearl diver carries a knife in his teeth. He opens the shells with his knife. When he finds a pearl, he carries it up. Up, up, he comes from the deep water. Then Kublai Khan sent Marco to Tibet. Tibet was far away. Marco carried a letter from Kublai Khan. In Tibet, Marco saw people making silk. He saw men take gold from a river. Marco saw towers of silver. He saw towers of gold. Marco Polo went back to Kublai Khan. He told the king about Tibet. The king liked what Marco told him. He thought that Marco was a wise young man. He made Marco the head of one of his cities. Marco went to Japan for the king. He wrote letters to Kublai Khan. He told them about Japan. He told about the people. He told about their homes. He told about many new things. The Polos were in China for a long time. They were away from home for 21 years. They were rich. Marco had worked for Kublai Khan. His father and uncle had worked. They had traded with people of eastern lands. Now they wanted to go home. They wanted to go back to Venice. Kublai Khan was sad to see them go. He gave them many gifts to take with them. The Polos traveled back to Venice. They had a safe trip. They had been away from Venice a long time. People there didn't know them. Marco began to tell people about his travels in the East. He told about the palace of Kublai Khan. He told about faraway places and strange people. He told about Riding on elephants, he told about black rocks that burn. He told about many other exciting things. The people listened to everything that Marco told them. Oh, Marco, you should write a book, they said. Marco Polo did write a book. His book told where he had been. It told what he had done. It told what he had seen. It told about the world he knew. All this happened long, long ago. It happened in a strange, exciting world. It happened in the world of Marco Polo. People Marco Polo met, the Mongols. The Mongols. Marco Polo traveled to China 
On the way, he traveled in many lands. He met many people. Marco met the Mongols. The Mongols were brave and strong. They wore boots made up of animal skins. They wore robes made up of wool. The men and women dressed almost alike. The Mongols lived on dry grasslands. These grasslands were north of China. Only short grasses grew on these lands. The Mongols animals ate the grass. When the grass in one place was gone, the Mongols moved to another place. They had to find new grass for their animals. Mongols had to move often. The Mongols animals. Mongols had many kinds of animals. They had sheep, cows and goats. They had horses, camels and oxen. The Mongols took good care of their animals. Animals were very important. They helped the Mongols in many ways. Making the wool cloth. The wool of the sheep was used to make cloth. The wool was put on a mat. Some water was put on the wool. The mat was rolled up and tied. The women rolled the mat on the floor. Then they beat the wool with their hands. The wool cloth was called felt. Mongols lived in tents. The tents were made of felt. The felt was put over a wooden frame. A Mongolian tent was called a yurt. The yurt was easy to put up. It was easy to take down too. When the Mongols moved, they took their houses with them. Sometimes the houses were put on wagons. Oxen pulled the wagons. Camels carried things on their backs. People rode on the horses. Mongols ate meat, milk and butter. They ate the meat of sheep, goats and cows. They got milk from goats, cows and horses. Some milk was made into butter. Some milk was made into cheese. Mongolian men made weapons. Weapons helped them to fight. Here are some weapons they used. Lance, battle axe, whip. The Mongol chief was the leader of the Mongols. The Mongol chief was called the Khan. The Khan had to be brave and strong. He had to know how to ride a horse well. He had to be a good fighter too.